You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Click. Someone make this lady a drink. What are you drinking, Morgan Murphy? Is it, is, isn't it still Silver October? No. No, it's Red not. Sauce? Listen, this is an evergreen. <laughs> this might be coming out Thanksgiving week. Okay, but I mean, I'm wondering. It's, when, when this comes out, it is Remember November, meaning uh-huh. we still drink, but we don't get blackout drunk. We remember. Oh. I remember. I didn't get that drunk. Okay. Remember November. So you're, this will be airing, but I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been like a month, over a month. Not here. Where did I see you? I don't know. I don't know either. You haven't been here when I was here in a I know, month. It's been, I know. It's been a while. Eat the you said mic. over a month. It's been. I said it's Pull been at least a month. Pull the mic towards you. You don't it's have to least, go to uh, it. Okay, I forgot how things work. Like a porn dirty I just drink. Got off the Pull ca- it towards out, your out mouth. Off the car. I just got off the car. Um, I uh, like a water you? would be amazing right now. He's I know that. Tell Gump, you know that's off brand. <laughs> um, yeah, I just got Doug. I wanted to take a shower. I wanted to settle in. Yeah, yeah that's why on. we didn't hug you when you came in. We wanted to, but we heard you didn't shower. You got a hat. You. Wait, you dr- wait. You just drove from the airport, not no, from, from LA. Los Angeles. Oh Jesus! Yeah, I, don't I have left car. you two messages, uh-huh. and you didn't call me back, but you liked my tweet, so I knew you didn't hate my guts. I didn't hate your I guts. Because I always worry. I, I gave you, you a shout you out the guts. other day on the the old Twitter about your uh, nationalism bit. That's more relevant than ever. <laughs> oh, that's true. Thanks. I've been ignoring Twitter for sober times. Yeah. I mean, I'll tweet, but I don't. If I if I read more than three comments, there's someone who pisses me off. Yeah, where I, want I, to drink I, and smoke I, and I think I'm them. now only on Twitter to comment on Twitter. Like, I think I'm only on Twitter because I feel like I should. I know I shouldn't be on Twitter. My life isn't any better for it. That being said, I feel like I should be aware <coughs> of things that are going on, even if they're awful, and that's one of them. Wait, and you're how supposed to be get, forcing oh, yourself. Oh, you did get to you. I'm yeah. forcing the, people the to see, like, like if the country is going to shit, I just want to see how and why. And like, I, I feel like it would be, uh, I, I could live in a sort of ignorant way and not know, but I feel like I'm supposed to know. You know what I mean? It's like knowing what kids are listening to and e- stuff. Everything I feel like, you're describing is why I've muted almost everybody that I follow on Twitter. <laughs> no, I, I follow people who hate me like on purpose. It's so awful. <laughs> I never, I never get to a place where I, I could figure out if it's okay to follow Trump till I realized I don't care. I don't watch him in the news, yeah. so why would I care what I've he says? I've never followed him. I don't follow I, any like big, like I don't follow like the Kardashian or whoever's that got the most people. I don't follow uh, Trump, and I have never wanted to. I just I see his tweets. I don't want to yell back except the uh, the World Series tweet because I thought that's I, that's my thing, and you don't don't well, take it. All right, <laughs> Morgan, I. You haven't been down in quite a while. Right. Uh, and I I really missed you. It was just your birthday. Yeah. And you went to Vegas, I heard. Uh-huh. And I left you a message. I go, hey, it's Morgan Murphy's birthday because I saw <laughs> someone tweet it. And then everyone from Gump to the ex, Mrs. Gump. And, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, we already called. And then I left you a message, which is really uh, even... Joby is here. Yeah. He sets his birthday on Facebook to April Fool's Day because that's the day that a million people you haven't heard from in 20 years. Oh, I hope you have a happy birthday. Yeah. But then it's the Dodgers, <laughs> and you're a Dodgers fan yeah. with a Dodgers tattoo, uh-huh. and we hate the Dodgers. Yeah. And I- no, I believe me. I was very not like Joby was kind enough in, for, for most games to send me um, some sort of fuck you text. About the World Series, yeah. Um, which one of my, you know, when, which one of the people on on my team was going to be awful? Uh, you know, well, messages Puig like that is Puig the did worst. Great. He, he did fucking great. licks his back. He did it's great. as disgusting as Steph Curry dangling his fucking mouthpiece out like he's a raver on. Fucking- it worked though. It it worked. It's not like you you could get up here and say, well, if like Kenley Jansen, if it he worked. licked his ball, yeah, uh, maybe it didn't. Mean? He did well. I okay. thought it was a All metaphor right. you know for what? like, I'm going to stick this in your ass. Oh. Like, Before that's... I go on stage, I jerk <laughs> off on the opener, but I kill uh-huh. every night. It works. You know what? 
Louis C.K. didn't kill every night. But I did because I jerked off on the opener. Point B, and uh-huh. I missed you. And then oh, I think the second night, mm-hmm. when it wasn't your birthday, mm-hmm. I uh, I contacted you again saying, I think your birthday in Vegas is kind of hurting our relationship because I can't talk shit yeah. about the Dodgers and right. the World Series. Um, well, I'm sorry. I should have. I should have. If it you was back. the bad <laughs> news bears, I, 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 considered I should have called you back. I should have thought about you. I forgot that you're in a. Place no, you've been right. calling fucking Gump and everyone okay, well, else in my social circle. Full disclosure, I was like, I I don't like to call you when I think you'll remember it, and I thought you weren't drinking. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. That's fair enough. Point being, I missed yeah. you, and at some point, That's I thought, nice. I because I know I I. Uh, more than anyone, I bust your balls and I, I pick on you a lot. Not more than anyone. More than anyone, really? Yeah. Well, I noticed yeah, that I hadn't picked on anyone more than you in oh. a long time. And I realized I miss you. And I really did and do, even if it's just to pick on you. Oh, thank Aww. you. That's so sweet. So welcome home. Thank you. How long are you here for, Barker? Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of, I had a... You know, uh, old Gump over there and stuff. I had a bed. This is a fun story. I had this extra bed, so I thought I'd drive it out instead of buy one here. So I just thought I'll get the bed out and then I'll, you know, see see when I need to be back. <coughs> now the bed's here. Where's the Where's the dog? Uh, I didn't bring the dog because I didn't know what my trip was going to be like. And the dog is only uh, registered as an emotional support animal on one airline right now because everyone needs new, yeah, new yeah, paperwork. So, right. I, uh, so I was worried I wouldn't be able to get him back. It was a whole thing. So, oh, you drove out your flying back. Yeah, anyway, drove out flying back. Is it one, you got a one-way rental? No, I have it in my truck that I keep in Arizona, but oh. I drove it out last time so I could bring furniture back and save I money see. by not um, buying new You have a new truck? Car. Yeah, I got, oh, a yeah, truck. She's got a truck. She has an here. Arizona truck. Are you not yeah. listening? Fuck her. Yeah, she's I have a got truck a that I keep in Arizona. Back seats and shit. Fuck her. I love it. Rub it in his face. I didn't want to rent a car every single time I was here, and I didn't want to drive 10 hours every single you time were, I wanted you to You are the perfect dominatrix for Hennigan right now. What? You own what? <laughs> hey, what did you truck? <laughs> I don't, only because yeah. I like trucks, and I want one. my truck. <laughs> Look at it. Envy it, you filthy fucking uncut Scotsman. I just, I just like shove my purchases in his face. <laughs> <laughs> only yeah. if they're truck-based. Yeah. It, it doesn't help that his chair is like a childlike yeah. level below us. I keep wanting to lift Hennigan Oh, out, no, they're so at the that, same level. I think the same it leaks level. down. They're at the same, <laughs> same level. She's just his feet are swinging. Big woman and a short, short man. Hennigan, and you he cannot loves if, it when uh, she beats his brains oh, out. If Sorry. Doug has a um, a couple phone books, you could drive my truck and just try it. Oh, out. that's kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks very much, Scarecrow woman. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like scarecrows have a very ideal body type. Actually, uh, I don't think we've talked to you on the podcast mm-hmm. since I destroyed our careers. Oh, oh what'd you do? I did Roseanne. Oh, yeah, and you, you did Roseanne. you wrote for Roseanne. I did. So I did the final episode. You did the last ever episode of uh, of Roseanne. Yep. And you wrote the last ever episode of Roseanne. <laughs> I wrote I wrote one I wrote I wrote one like five before that. But yeah, I wrote uh yeah, I wrote the it's been a fun ever. year. I wrote on uh Roseanne, I opened for Louis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I Oh, they didn't invite you back to write for Killing Roseanne. <laughs> no, they. I, I. I have a really. I honestly. I. Everyone there was amazing, and uh, uh, like the people who moved on and did that show were great. I just. Oh, you did. Did you have an opportunity to work on um, the new? Connors, yeah, I mean, it's I, called, d- right? I did, but it was. It was a very amicable. Like I. I had other things going on, and also, there was. So, you know, I. You were on with George like, Lopez. Well, I did a pilot. I was doing a pilot when all the shit went. I hadn't been there. I hadn't been there for three, four months when there was like, okay, I was because we wrapped the last episode December of 2017. So people don't, I think, realize that we started writing like May, June of 2017. So it was just, it was, and the country changed. It was just, there was so much chaos around it that I was, you know, I had other things that were less chaotic, but... uh but it was unfortunate. It was it bummed me out because I don't know. You know why? Yeah, you, you can't talk about it openly. Well, it's not even the stuff I can't talk about openly doesn't even matter at this point. The stuff that I, you know, it, it, for me, like personally, like when we were there, it was a really 
positive experience and then it it's weird to be gone from something and then see chaos ensue and sort of not know what to do with it and not be i'm not i wasn't i was there part as a woman who enjoys so i didn't have giant control black basketball design. cock uh-huh you can attest to Roseanne is not a racist person. She's an insane person. I Beautifully insane. Functionally yeah, I insane. Don't, uh, I don't know anything anymore. I don't know. I, I feel like I got... I'm I was speaking very, for you. You just keep denying I'm going to speak for you. <laughs> I just feel like I was very... Uh, it was like every time something chaotic happened, I, I was like adjacent to it. And it, it felt... It was a lot, There was a few months of where I just didn't... I, I needed to kind of hide. You're talking about her crazy, and I'm talking about everything kind of going on, and like comedy, and feeling like I had, you know, uh, you know, the, the Roseanne thing was cra- everything was crazy, and then there's just also, um, you know, stupid things that just seem to be blowing up. That where I see more of my friends getting sort of in trouble when I I understand people who do sort of egregious stuff and being punished for it, but. It's just a lot. There's a lot right now. On every spectrum. Yeah, on every and, spectrum. And and there's no way to really talk about it other than in the sort of context of like a friendly conversation with friends or, or, or not yeah. on the air or whatever. But Yeah, green yeah. room conversations. <laughs> yeah, not just green room conversations, like not recorded conversations. No, you know, like I feel like uh, people, you know, just print interviews. Everything's reduced to... Uh, clickbait now and I, it just it kills me because I, I want I, I fucking hate Trump I want us to win like I it makes me mad from a person on the side of let's just fucking get him out you and then stop me yelling at each other like of where I was gonna write a thing <coughs> the, when the Louis thing came out and I was I had several incarnations of a me too yeah. bit but then the me too thing kept going uh, this is an over yeah. It's like if 9-11 kept happening and another building dropped and another <laughs> building and another. Like, right, I got to wait till it's over to write the bit. Well, the crazy thing is I wouldn't <clears throat> even know. And I feel like all my I, I, I can sleep at night knowing that the thoughts in my head are of uh, sort Pure. of some moral integrity. But <clears throat> I wouldn't know what I'd be allowed to say out loud that wouldn't offend some subsection some group of loud people <laughs> i don't know who it would be <laughs> oh, that's such a oh, shitty just, position to be in I when just, you're trying and to it's hard work because, right. like, if if chances are if you think it's wrong i also think it's wrong and if you think it's good i think it's good occasionally i disagree but like the stuff i just can't stand right now is, is but, that they, they would take a piece out of the sentence and say she said this just like no exactly st- that's uh, 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 political ads where they yeah oh yeah, you want to hire this for a governor? He said, and they give you three right. words out well, of context. Well, the problem, too, is, you know, I'm, I feel like I, I tweeted something. I try to, it's hard because I don't want to be on Twitter, and yet when I'm on there, I f- sometimes feel like, oh, I have to say that, even though I know it does me no good, uh, personally or professionally. But I, <laughs> or otherwise. Or otherwise, but, like, <laughs> there is stuff where I just go, I just think, I think the one thing that people really need to do is be like, everyone needs to be just... It, First of all, the the f- far right white nationalist fringe. I'm not even including that in like the everybody. I just mean like regular people, a little smarter about what information you sort of regurgitate back into the world. Because, like, I think journalists are kind of doing a great. I've read a lot of articles that are great, and then the headline is sort of, as eh, sort of tells you what the article is, and then the tweet about the article <laughs> is so completely not remotely reflective of the article and I just I feel like I feel bad for I feel really bad for like reporters and journalists because it's I always like I was thinking about it like if I wrote a great show maybe one day that'll happen if I wrote like a great script and then I handed it in they were like love it it's gonna go in there we're gonna call it you know like you know uh fart Nazi or something and I'm like please don't call it fart Nazi I worked really hard it's about a doctor I just don't think that would be like it would just and then everyone would go don't watch fart Nazi it looks it fart Nazi that's a terrible thing I go no 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 please read the script like please please and that's how I feel about like I've read I have been tricked by clickbait into reading some great articles where I click on it and I go oh this is gonna be bad and then I go oh that was a very like kind of uh, it was like a, a very philosophical take on that issue that I didn't think I thought that was just going to be 
I think that's just called being face. tricked by clickbait. But there's no, there's no. <laughs> the problem no, is no, clickbait. Even clickbait click. used uh, to be trick. clickbait. <laughs> clickbait used to be, you know, kind of reserved a little bit more for trash subject matter. Uh, Salacious. And now, you wouldn't understand how now this child all, star looks now. Right, but now, now it's, it's all now trash it's subject legi- matter. Right, but now it's like legitimate <laughs> stories are sort of reduced to that. And I and I understand the financial motivation behind it, but it's like I'm just trying to get a story. You and I would have conversations throughout. Even at the beginning of Me Too, and Me Too encompasses uh-huh. a lot of stuff. Someone said something racist, someone said something shitty, someone was caught on, you know, s- fucking TM shit. Some, But we would talk where you would say... Well, don't say what I would say. Well, there was the stuff. <laughs> but I'm saying where you go, I, I could never go public with this, especially on Twitter, where right. you can't make it a, a, a succinct argument. But you, I think you learn, like, with certain people who've gone public just with their stories, and it's just there's no right way to say anything. And, like, I don't think any of my life stories are personally that fascinating or important. No, no, no one has. Like, no, we yeah. no, don't have a lot of that, requests for you. Things. What you guys are talking <laughs> about just happened right now. I don't know if you guys are like veiled referencing it, but I've been listening to a lot of Howard Stern this week, and Sarah Silverman did an interview with Howard Stern, and then she they took Louis. a sa- uh, but they took a soundbite no, 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 of what I, I, yeah, of tweet, what she said, tweeted, and not yeah. in context. I tweeted about that, and I and it's like I know it's funny because I know the friends of mine, or maybe former. I don't know if they I I. It's weird when you write something and you go, I know that somebody I care about is going to not like me for this. But I also feel like if any time I've tweeted something like, hey, guys, X, Y, or Z is not the enemy, something along those lines, it's been a broad spectrum of people from Kathy Griffin to Kurt Metz, whoever it is, like who I feel like if if I see something happening to somebody and their words taken out of context in a situation – all I think is, okay, I could definitely be in their position, and I'm only doing what I hope to God another person a peer <coughs> would do for me. And it's almost like OCD guilt. It's not like being a good person. It's like, if I don't say something, then no one's going to stand up for me when, when something's being misinterpreted. Well, yeah. two things. One, you talked me out. I was going to write an op-ed piece. Right. At one point with the I, Louis C.K., I think it was. Yeah. And you told me you complained about all these people that are writing op-ed pieces <laughs> just to get their name involved in the movement. No, I think. Well, I also think people genuinely think that their their op is important. Yeah. That being said, it's it, Sarah it often, Silverman is important. Sarah is important, she, but but she's what, not committal but as what much she as was she should. Talking about was a. a the problem with all this stuff is that female comedians especially can't avoid being asked about it. Uh, it, it specifically, like, I guess my generation, a little bit older, like anyone who's worked with anybody who's been sort of like Me too or whatever. And at some point, it's like, I don't know what you want me to say anymore. Like, I, if I said I, that what I, I, I literally, <laughs> I was about to say if I said something hypothetically, and even that, I feel like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what a, hypothetically. What a Let me make situation. this about yeah. me because it's the yeah. Doug Stano yeah. podcast. Uh, being pigeonholed at all, mm-hmm. where I fucking Hennigan has to shake his head when I have to do, and you're very controversial. <laughs> and is there any step you won't? Uh, is there any <laughs> subject you won't talk about? Like, I'm not. Con- uh, you find. So getting pigeonholed you're at all when you're answering you're not, the right. same questions. Uh, right. What, a, uh, what uh, does it feel like to be a female comic is my, is there any f- yeah. line in the sand? Uh, I've yeah. been getting the, the what's it like being the, you know, the female writer, the female comedian. I mean, it's, and I Haven't you always got that though? I have, but I also like had the sort of fortune, misfortune of, of, Starting, you know, this was a like eighteen years. Like I started, and then for a while, and I'm not defending this. I, I mean, it certainly wasn't in my power, but I was for many shows the only female on the staff. So I got asked about that a lot, and I just like I don't, I don't know what. But it's always the same questions. <laughs> right. So no matter how you're pigeonholed, you get the right. Ralphie May talking about. Oh, hey, you're a really fat comic. 
what's it like to steal uh, everybody's yeah. jokes? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's. I mean, it's fine. I, I'll talk about it, but I don't know what. I don't know how to. I don't know what people want. Well, again, the problem is that I think it might come down to is the audience is always wrong, because uh, the worst part of comedy. But, but yeah, but in the sense that I mean, uh, inside baseball, in the last week was it five days? Jen Friedman's little uh, Twitter screed where she talked about a review. Of a show she did. Oh, Kirkman, where, yeah, where they brought up sorry, sorry, Jen, 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 Jen Kirkman, basically. Yeah. And the review was basically, she didn't talk about the subjects I wanted her to talk well, no, about. It was, it was, she got pissed because it was, it was that she's been, you know, this is like, it's funny because I had Kirkman and, and Natasha Leggero and Meryl Marco and Bonnie McFarland over the other night. We had like a oh, ladies no, comedian. Hang on, we, we, we have a, we have a yeah. over under name dropping. But you oh. have to name drop people, our listeners. Now. Well, no, I just, it was, was like a great, you know, yeah. women in comedy hang. And Kirkman is, you know, it, we've had very different experience in the past. But like she's, she's gotten in trouble for not saying enough, for saying too <coughs> yeah. much, for not doing, you know, and, and they won't stop asking her. It's like, it's, it, you're only giving opportunities to make people other people's enemies who aren't the enemy like i don't know what there's I, no I, this is what i need to know mm-hmm. as much as my listeners when you say gut into trouble and people are asking who are the people well, right. and yeah. what is the trouble? it's so funny because that's i always i now when everyone says yeah everyone's saying this or people are saying this i always uh, i'm like i'm like who and now i'm guilty of doing that but good i just mean well, for the most part, if I say people, then it usually refers to social, social media. media, right? Which yeah. is uh, which is not representative. Which is, no, it's not people. representative. Who was the coach yesterday? Who was they were asking him about? Uh, what do you feel about the about people on Twitter? And he was like, Twitter. I don't give a Twitter. Like he just goes up. Ah, people sitting at home, like with bills unpaid. <laughs> like true. he just was. He just started Twitter. I wish I could, like I wish I could talk. Yeah. About, this is what I wish. I they wish are I could who talk, we thought we were. I wish I could talk about Twitter. Oh, okay with the attitude of like a 70 year old football coach who just like is like I ignore it I don't care I move on with my life uh, but uh but yeah no I felt awful for Jen because it's the same thing kind of sort of where it's just like stop stop making other people responsible for somebody else's choice and don't give them I don't put them in a the corner middle, where I they have the to one. where they have to somehow think of the magical four words that will please everybody uh. no one will right now things are too contentious and when everybody's allowed to voice their opinion i felt awful the other day for stanhope because i listened to that howard stern interview and she uh sarah silverman was talking about this and howard stern says have any other comedians ever pulled their dick out in front of you and she said um no (laughs) and i went oh that is so for the listener that's not on twitter (laughs) When that came out, I have a picture of me pulling my dick out in front of Sarah Silverman, wow. P. Waits, Hennigan's neighbor, my old flame for a minute. Yeah, I it's, thought for sure. Is, yeah. I thought for sure it was going to be the but next that, sentence going to well, be I Doug Stanhope. Hang on, hang on. That. That, that's what we would <laughs> refer to as green room comedy, mm-hmm. which really was uh, a, a, a mental conflict when Trump said. Uh, that's just locker, locker yeah. room talk and you go well you know what any honest comedian would go we're way worse in a green room except that there's the, the funny thing is I always felt like I could kind of say for the most part what I've seen what I've witnessed what I've experienced like tell my story because in my head I go well I, nothing I've never done anything egregious or awful or evil or even kind of been a part of it I mean I've been part of stuff that's like edgy or dirty or whatever that's like yeah. in the context of a party setting and now I look back and I go, I guess you don't. Like I was 22 and somebody if was like naked caught, in the bathroom. I'm, I'm just yeah. talking about the, the the explicit level of completely inappropriate jokes. Right. Retard, faggot, nigger. Everything goes in a green room because we're all comics and we're jaded. So I'm not talking Except about not you know, anymore, finger fucking which is you a, in a green room. You, you haven't said it in a long time, but you said it before on the podcast and I always thought it was funny. Is comedians are better people. Oh no! I've well, said no, that on stage. I right. recorded and, that. Well, We're and, better and fucking people. No, the, 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 the your, your I don't listen to your podcast valid. about working at UPS graveyard shit. Your, your no, argument is I, valid. That's the thing is that a lot of also a lot of people have been like, hey, oh, that person does this and that person does this. I go, you're talking about some of the best human beings I know. <laughs> like that's I think why I got a little mad about 
the Sarah thing is I go, this is not just a person who like didn't commit a crime. This is a person who is, for most of the people who are upset, an ally to them on a daily basis, politically and socially, and trying to do something good. And that's where it kills me. Like that's where coming from like, I'm like, I'm such a, li- I'm, so, I'm like borderline socialist and people are yelling at me like, don't say that word. And I'm like, I'm on your side. The problem is that you, we, when we repeat this, give credibility to whatever media outlet is saying, the world is angry at Sarah, no. Nope. Two yep. people on Twitter right. were That's angry, it. and they can right. create right. this problem. That it, yeah. is no, there's no one fucking my, angry. Show me the person that's fucking angry. My, well, the people my, that were angry were some comics, and the people I was talking to were kind of the same comics. And I know it's like a it's a bit of a subtweet to a group, but you know, and there were people who didn't know who I was talking about when I said like Sarah's not the enemy. It just I don't I just don't think there's any way to win right now. The, the part two of that question is, and I've talked about it a lot, as we age, mm-hmm. a lot of our friends get, we used to just be partying, fucked up on mm-hmm. ecstasy, and what was in your ass, I don't know, was that yours? And then as we get older, people are professional, so you can't talk. So mm-hmm. the same way you can't talk about some things that might lose you a job. You can't take a stand. Yeah, I can take, I, yeah. But I'm saying on a personal level, we also run into those problems, like just podcasting. Yeah, I, yeah that's our neighbor. Yeah. Like I was just, yeah. last month I was talking shit about some lady who used to run a restaurant in town and I saw her <laughs> living as a hoarder. And, I, and she was a dick to us just as a, Restaurant tour. She was a dick to us, and I was happy. And I like. I have to obfuscate this story so much because I don't want someone yeah. local knowing I'm shitting on a lady who's probably really down on her luck. I was just yeah. for a minute. I had Schadenfreude, but when it gets to a place where you go, I can't say that out loud. It's also not just saying things out loud for the now. I think that people. I think even five years ago, I don't think there was a immediate awareness of how things last on the internet and I think that people now are aware in the moment that it's happening that it will that it will exist forever and that's why it's hard to you know it's hard to have a a wildly concise articulate thought uh you know in in in, an improvised thought that makes sense that makes people happy I yeah it's uh (laughs) I don't know I hope that in the future people take all that shit with the grain of salt that it should be taken with. Is it's well, a that's the thing too. Is that, is that the, the I mean, place of the so place dumb. that the country's in right now is like that's the reason <laughs> that you. That's everyone is. You know, everyone's well, on edge and well, everyone's waiting because everybody to pounce, has. And an, I get it. I an get why people to are say upset. Something. They do, and they but, never have before. And yeah. also, my daughter was asking me. We were talking about politics the other day. And I said, politics has become like uh, sports wrestling. But for people who are too dumb to understand Wrestling. sports, <laughs> and they just want to look at memes and then claim that their side is winning yeah. based on the memes, because that's that's the only that's outlet they have to, to learn uh, stuff. Yeah. So it's just nobody a joke. voted for Trump; they voted for someone they hated in the office yeah. or voted against. <laughs> yeah, but the reason they but the big the, thing the, is they, nobody voted. Look at the reason. percentage yeah, of people voted. that actually voted. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's take a break. Let's get a cocktail on this. I need a this cocktail. This poor woman just drove in, and we put her immediately on the microphone because we're done with we 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 have sports to watch. She has a shower to take, and we're all going to shower her in my brand new shower. Uh, so I'll, we'll be right back after these messages. Please hold. Chaley, before we get to the uh, sponsors this week, let's hump some merch. It's Black Friday. It's holiday season, and it's time for you to buy some Doug Stanhope shit for your friends and your relatives for the Christmas and the Hanukkah and the Kwanzaa and whatever you do. What a great white elephant gift. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, we got, uh, first of all, we got the uh, stolen hotel Bibles that we've been stocking up on while I haven't been on the road, but I have been traveling. Those are personalized, autographed and personalized and sent to you. This Bible stolen exclusively for your name here, 
by my name here. <laughs> uh, so those while supplies last. Uh, we have new podcast coffee mugs, which I haven't even seen. Dude. They're new. Oh, okay. They're white. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. And, of course, I have my books at the, the DougStanhope.com store. Got Chad Shank t-shirts. We still have some of the VHS of my last uh, throwaway special. Pop Off Vodka Presents. That would be a great White Elephant gift. That would be the fucking oh, one. Oh, that's wicked good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's cheap o- too. It's and, only and look, available. It, it's under 20 bucks. So that's most, most uh, offices. They got those stupid rules. Also, we've got the abortion is green. We got that back in. We got those, uh, white and in the banana cream. I like the banana cream. Yeah. And we get a couple of podcast shirts, the pop off vodka shirt, bingo's book, stickers, gadgets, knickknacks. Yeah. Oh, death of a salesman. The, uh, Christ on a cross with, yeah. with death of a salesman t shirt. That'll make you a lot of friends at Christmas. I'm sure those will be going out the door. <laughs> Fuck yes. Dude, those sell year round. I know. It's great. It's a great and, shirt. And tis the season, right? Yes. Let's never forget. And of course, CDs and DVDs and all that shit. So go to DougStanhope.com and go to the store and load up for your Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatever the <laughs> fuck that nonsense is. And I hope you're doing it for yourself and not someone else because you have to. And remember, anything that you buy from the, uh, the Doug Stanhope store, I will autograph. But understand, my autograph is illegible. Buyer beware. And, uh, I got three letters all in one envelope from the UK. And the first letter is completely indecipherable. The next one is a little less indecipherable, but still indecipherable. Then the third letter in perfect printing, this guy writes a full fucking letter complaining about how my signature sucks. So to make a point, he sent three letters. <laughs> I thought it was from three different people. And I was like, I can't fucking read this. And then if I, I get if, to the second one. I can't fucking read this either. And then the third one that I can read, he wrote this same exact letter word for word three different times to make a point yeah. about how shitty my signature is in ad nauseum. He goes into detail about, yeah, it's... That's even like the layout on that you third that one. You got that signed by Doug Stanhope? No fucking way. Is that real? Or who's Dobbs? Which is pretty much... Yeah. You can pick out the D and the S. So, uh, yeah. That second one, if it was on parchment, <laughs> it would be like Thomas Jefferson manuscript or something. Yeah. yeah. Well so uh, that was uh, ukulele. <laughs> Something. What's his name? I can't go, tell. Go, go I got to get to the go third. To the oh, uh, one. Will ukulele one, which He's is got, not his Twitter. His, I looked him up on Twitter, his, but uh, very creative. You put a lot of fucking time and effort into that just to be a fucking dick. He's uh, his script reminds me of uh, Hedberg's. When yeah, Hedberg had and that. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. They oh, and Bingo too. Similar. Yeah. So, uh, all right, let's get to the uh, the uh, actual sponsors this week. Robin Hood. Yeah, I fuck with the stock market. Do you fuck with the stock market? Shaley's now fucking with the stock market thanks to Robin Hood. Robin Hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission free. They strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. It's a non intimidating way for stock market newcomers to invest for the first time with true confidence. It's simple and intuitive. It's got a clear design with data presented in a way that's easy to digest. My stockbroker would just call me up and just go into this barrage of Wolf of Wall Street speak. I had no idea what he was talking about, and I'd just say yes. After you hang up the phone, you could not repeat one thing that he said. No, I'd put him on speakerphone, and no one had any (laughs) idea what he's talking about. And I'd just go, yep. Okay, go ahead. No, I did. Now I know what the fuck I'm doing to an extent. As much as I know anything. Robinhood makes it easy. I, I went ahead and did the same, the deal that they're offering here. I went and got a uh, one free stock from Robinhood because I signed up. And all I do is pull up the, the page, Robinhood.com, and that clear and simple shows me where, where it's at, what, what the forecast is, other things to look at on the side. Real simple. And no commissions. No commissions. 
I'm looking now. I'm researching things. I'm not. I'm not some some big wheeler dealer. I'm lo- looking at things that I want to get behind. And uh, it's fun to have stock. Couple bucks on a uh, on a stock and just watch where it goes. It's it, you're not you're not like investing the nest egg and uh, getting your parents to sign over their uh, their life insurance policies so you can right. uh, invest but, uh, in magic beans. Yeah, but after a while, yeah, you can start to He's, do some serious investing yes. once you know what you're doing, yeah. and this makes that simple. And you can do that here. They have easy to understand charts and market data. You place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone, and all of a sudden, you're in the fucking business. <laughs> You learn by doing. You learn how to invest as you build your portfolio. You discover new stocks and track favorite companies with personalized news feeds. And uh, you get custom notifications for price movements, so you'll never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at stanhope.robinhood.com. That's stanhope.robinhood.com. LiftMode.com. Don't take pills if you don't know what's in them. The people at LiftMode are sick of all the bullshit health supplements being sold today. LiftMode doesn't sell useless products that don't work or hide behind secret formulas with made-up names so you don't know what you're putting in your body. LiftMode sells only the purest supplements they can find and they have a full array of screamers, zingers, bombers, and even bonarial aids. They do. They have a libido uh, enhancing. Those were names you came up with. Those aren't on the website. I've been to the website. The website is is stunning. The navigation at the top is calming, energizing, mood lifting, aphrodisiac, health promoting. Yeah, and I renamed them Boomers, Zingers, <laughs> Blasters. All right, I just, hummers. I just want everyone to know that, that that's your uh, your interpretation. All right, well, if you don't like my uh, euphemisms, I'll tell you the uh, the libido enhancing one I saw is uh I don't know how to pronounce this. Icarine. <laughs> I c a r i i n. Icarine. It's a chemical compound classified as pre- <laughs> prenylated flavanol glycoside, a type of flavonoid. It's an eight prenyl derivative of camphorol 370-diglucoside. Yeah. How about boner, boner related? <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> It's a compound that's isolated from several species of plant belonging to the genus Ep- Epimedium, which are commonly known as horny goat weed and yin yang hu. Which yin yang hu is, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> yin yang hu. Anyway, they also have a new line of the, uh, L theanine capsules. These are the ones, uh, that, uh, you brought up, right? No, uh, Chad and I have been uh, using those ever since they got in touch with us over a year ago. Oh, that's right. Uh, the L-theanine with the caffeine is a, a nice little uh, pick-me-up. I talked to Chad today. He was up late last night with his Twitch.tv, and part of his routine every day is before he gets on Twitch TV, he'll uh, he'll take one of those, and it'll help him uh, get a little uh, little energy, a little burst of energy before he gets, uh, gets on the TV in front of the kids playing the games. It says uh, it helps moderate the side effects of caffeine it's like taking a shot of espresso the l-theanine helps like mellow out the caffeine so you don't right. get that jittery feel you don't get the jitters and the yeah. uh, sweats and the bed shits and the uh well that, that might be something else sores. in your diet doug I, I think maybe you need to back up a little bit maybe too much beets in your uh, smoothies try it risk-free <laughs> if you don't like a lift mode product you can return it within 90 days for a full refund use coupon code stanhope to save 20 percent off your first order Lift Mode, L-theanine capsules, and dozens of other supplements are available at Amazon, Walmart, and LiftMode.com. Free shipping on all U.S. orders over $25. So that's that's automatic right there. Go to LiftMode.com and use promo code STANHOPE. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Lift Mode is proud to sponsor the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Blue Apron. That's too loud. Blue Apron. There we go. Blue Apron. What did we eat? We ate uh, cheesy chipotle black bean quesadillas with caramelized onions. And I found out you didn't like uh, onions. Yeah. Didn't well, I? Know. I know, not, not, not. Caramelized. It's not like eating an, like a, an was, onion I, like I, an I, apple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's Sometimes the, I like onions. That's the beauty of Blue Apron. Now, next time, I know not to put onions in. It's, it's, it's no big deal. Like, I can control... You don't have to eat I everything can, that Blue Apron sends directly to your door. 
farm fresh ingredients, step by step recipes to your door. You don't have to use them all. You can pick out the shit you don't like. Exactly. It wasn't the uh, it wasn't the onions as much as the radishes? I don't think I've ever eaten a radish in my life. It's just something that you don't you look at and you don't want to eat. I eat them like grapes, just gross. the whole bowl. No, I don't. You're That's terribly gross. I, I I have not eaten a, the first time I ate a radish that I prepared was Blue Apron because they they use that as a uh, as a salad on the side a lot, and that was what we had this time. Which you didn't. I knew I wasn't going to even try you with with the vegetables. I enjoy the Blue Apron, and I have taken chances on things that I would <laughs> never eat. And most of the time, I was pleasantly surprised. Radish is where I draw the line. <laughs> you draw your own lines. Hey, Blue Apron, you choose chef-designed recipes. You decide each week. You cook incredible meals in as little as 20 minutes. Drunk-friendly, all the instructions, all the ingredients, proportioned. You don't have to figure out what an eighth of a tablespoon is. They just give you that much. You don't have to fucking think. Gump can make these meals, it, it gets and they're to, fantastic. It gets down to if you want to put all of the like the chili powder in or a little bit. There's no measuring. You just do it. So skip meal planning and get straight to cooking with Blue Apron. Choose your recipes based on our schedule. Our schedule. Not ours. Not the podcast schedule. No. Though you could. You could yeah. time. Because now we're, we're consistently out on Wednesdays. You could time your Blue Apron to eat with the Doug Stanhope podcast. That is when we get ours delivered, by the way. <laughs> Every Wednesday. Is it? <laughs> well, I'm always hungry. <laughs> on Wednesday. When I do my podcast. Because <laughs> you haven't cooked yet. Coming up, it's a smoky chicken and sweet potato bake with cheesy cornbread biscuits. Not flicking any of that off the plate. No. And then a hot Italian sausage pizza. Love it. Yeah. You could pick any of the meals every week. And when you don't want it, like Thanksgiving this week, put it on hold if you want. I bought things that were side friendly so that everything we prepare will be out on the Thanksgiving table as well. <laughs> that would get eight. Yep. All right, so check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash stanhope. That's blueapron.com slash stanhope to get your first three meals free. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right, let's get back to the podcast. Nothing. I didn't, I didn't personally find anything that was... Uh that was bad. I just was like, I don't know what I said when I was 28 in a bar in New York. Like, I don't, I know, you know. The point is, you didn't, didn't find anything that was bad. No. Hang on. Yeah. Hennigan, yeah. get on that fucking yeah. open mic. Yeah. Go ahead. Talk some shit. We're talking about deleting tweets yeah. and shit you said on Twitter. Again, I am, uh, 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 what's the word? It's not sacrosanct. I love that word, but it's not right. But I'm impenetrable to an extent. You're fireproof. Fireproof is good. That, I stole that, by the way, from Nassim Taleb, the book Anti-Fragile. Everyone should read it. Wow, good plug. Smart Fuck Magazine here. My, uh, I, I didn't, it's funny because I, I was going to delete, I was going to see if there was anything bad and then delete it, and I couldn't find anything. Hmm. So I just pressed some delete all button. I kind of, I almost didn't think it would work. It was very impulsive. And then all of a sudden I had no tweets and it felt good. But also because like, at the end of the day, I, I never made a nickel off Twitter. I don't particularly care. I don't find it to be art per se. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh my god, I'm 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 burning down mm -hmm. evidence. I just was like, ah, it's not it's not worth it to me. If I said something at at, at twenty eight twenty nine that I don't remember that could be misconstrued because I feel like I can, again, I can like morally defend. Like I go, oh well, I clearly didn't mean anything awful because I don't know if I've ever really met anything awful. That being said, is it worth is it worth it at the end of the day? Like. You go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I but said that. But you okay. always have the fallback of you can say, oh, I did tweet that, but I'm just a girl. It, <laughs> here's the worst thing about that yeah. is that still exists somewhere. So yeah. that at some point, if oh, somebody yeah. wants to bring it against you, what they'll also bring yeah. against you is that she even tried to delete it. Well, that's yeah. why I have yeah. it. And but here's she the thing. It. I could say Fucking I could also people. say like, "Hey, I deleted links to T-shirts, and I deleted like a picture of me at a concert. I deleted yeah. everything." But it they wouldn't a, print that. Yeah. They would just print. No. Yeah, just I deleted bite. it, and they would skip the yeah. butt. Yep. But I also they'd skip. You'd be the reduced butt to also. that soundbite yeah. you talked about earlier. Yeah. For but it would, sure. it would also be like keeping you know clips. If I if I had a website and if I had clips of myself doing stand up, <laughs> it would be like keeping old clips where I go, ah, I didn't really like that material. And it's not me anymore. Why would the, I keep it? On? The, the people who let's say let's, let's call them judger, yeah. the people who are judging on the internet 
are treating every every thought you've ever had and put out there as if you had it tattooed on your forehead. Right. It's like these are just ephemeral throwaway moments that I just went yeah. and that was it. Yeah, I mean, I got to say there's stuff that I tweeted that I didn't want out there that was very um, benign, but it was just like there were a, a handful of years, for a few years probably, at the beginning of Twitter where it was just like a, a live watching, yeah. even making fun of like celebrities on yeah. the red carpet, which I got to say like, it, it, it's funny because we always say like the maturity of comedy is like I used to do this and I used to I don't do this anymore like I don't find that to be that interesting anymore I don't like I used to be like oh that person looks stupid going to the Grammys I don't I'm just like oh it's a real person like I can't do it anymore so even that she kind of benign old. bullshit I was just like who cares yeah I did <laughs> I did but I if I loved the stuff, I wouldn't delete well, it. Well, you know why people don't do minstrel shows anymore? They don't sell tickets. <laughs> if minstrel shows in blackface were fucking huge ticket sellers on Broadway, yeah, people would still be doing blackface. They don't do it anymore, not because they're racially sensitive. They just go, that's stupid. Oh, really? I think I think racial sensitivity has a significant has a significant piece in it, but I don't know. I, I mean... No, no. If, if, so? if, no, that's just a different could, audience. If you could sell you out could, a theater doing a minstrel <laughs> show, someone would do yeah. it. You could sell out a Trump rally. No one would go to it, because like, <laughs> vaudeville was awful. You go back and watch it mm-hmm. as a, 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 a... Hey, that's a kitsch... Kitch the word? I don't know. Do you find it all, though, that these new kind of rules or whatever they are, like, I do find the only silver lining to me is it makes me think ten times over, like, is this smart enough to be better than it is edgy or Good offensive? Point. Is this, Good point. Like, I find myself going, yeah, no, that's not worth posting well, and or or just finding a smarter version of it in the attempt to not offend, but also like that tends to lead me to a more unique place. Hmm. Beautiful point. Uh, I have a fan base that tries to mimic what Mm -hmm. they think is my comedy. So Mm -hmm. I will get email, subject, nigger, cunt, retard, baby. Mm. And then I open it. Now that I got your attention... And then it's just some, I want to do comedy. Yeah, well, people, you know. Point being, yeah, do you have, if you're going to say something that you know people will find offensive, yeah, you better back it up with substance. You can't just subject line, nigger, cunt, retard, baby. (laughs) What's the joke? So, yeah, it does make you, all right, what, like, again, I don't use the word faggot on stage, buddy. In the fun house, we still, just like a green room, use every offensive term. And we try to find more offensive terms because that's what we do mm. as a comedy culture. But when it's on stage, yeah, I, you have to. I can defend. I mean, there's some bits. Well, just like everyone. Yeah. When you, like you said, Morgan, <laughs> yeah. when you're a kid, you said stop. I wouldn't say it the same way yeah. now, but if, I can defend the point. Right. That's and it. I can't. If you, that's yeah. it. If you yeah. can that's bitch the about the language yeah. or. Well, that's what it's going. If it's obviously a joke. And it, and it depends on how the crowd feels about you. But there's a reason. And I think you hit it on the head. You can defend. You right. have jokes about raping a dude on a football field. And you have jokes about finger fucking the Duggar daughters. But where are you most prominent right now in social media is plastered all over memes about nationalism. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. It, it, that's it, a it long depends. time ago. It's <laughs> random. Mm-hmm. It's I don't think there's a rhyme or reason to why people will pick the target that they pick. They just want to feel better by bringing somebody else down. Yeah. The one, is all it is. Yeah, it's the, random. The, the Go ahead, thi- Brian. The one area that I do think that I think I know Doug I think does well. I think, and somebody like I always hate to invoke her because. I, I often so, so it comes across as like a fucking love fest because I think she's great but Laurie Martin mm-hmm. oh, is yeah. um, they will always remember their comedians first and foremost mm-hmm. and when they're making a point they make it funny Yeah. and I don't like when comedians just are just like everyone else yeah. and make a tweet like this is wrong no make it funny yeah or I mean I think I also make 
things I, 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 there's so much of the same noise now that like yeah. to find the original that's what I mean by like kind of this this new place of what can I say and what can't I say is like is actually I'm writing less but I think the stuff that's coming out might mm-hmm. might be a little better because I you know there's when someone yelled at me about uh, I think we were having like a James Gunn disguise was ages yeah, ago yeah. you know was, was yelling at me about that like it I don't know. I, I, I don't even get into that, but like, we uh, started. What the? What was the uh, impetus for what became my Me Too material? Mm-hmm. Was Andy after we got done with Andy and tracking down his pedophile, and then we got <coughs> sued, and we had to fly back, and then we had to go to court in ill-fitting suits, and. Uh, then the next night we did a gig and I did a bit about Andy's whole thing. He had already talked about it, but I, I talked about you know people who are capitalizing on this. It was before Me Too even came out and I've just retooled that bit over and over because Me Too is now kind of in the same family with uh, uh, what was the... Uh, Black Lives Matter, like they're all the same, and like you can't you, they they've they've commingled, coagulated yeah. into the same fucking argument yeah. on some level. I forget what my <laughs> point was. I, I, I was following you until you said you forgot it. what your point yeah. was. It's like a distraction of the month. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I find validity in like every cause that tends to tends to stem from the left and sort of against things that are bad. But I also it's weird to be kind of what I think is uh, at least like on in many ways of, and in many parts of my life to be like sort of a feminist and to be a very far left to be all these things. And then also go, yeah, I think also this. And, and recognize then people go, bullshit. Right, but then also, then, then people scream at me, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm saying that, like, why are you screaming at the person who disagrees with you the least? <laughs> like, why are you taking that little sliver where we disagree and deciding because that I'm the enemy? Because you have the biggest voice. But, That's why. If you call bullshit, I call bullshit. Oh, yeah, he did the man show, which was derogatory to women, and he's got a whole fucking career of... Being, if you say it, oh, now it has yeah. weight, but everyone's fucking afraid to say shit because, yeah, it, it's fucking everyone's career when it is bullshit. Yeah. And bullshit, but it that, draws. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say that in terms of fucking everyone's career, I mean, I, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, A, it's quite clear that Louis C.K., if he wanted to, could be touring theaters right now. No, I said Guarantee. That, I said that on stage. Yeah, I know you did. It happened. True. Yeah. I go, yeah. Yeah, his career is over. Yeah. Unless he decided to do stand up and it played across the street and you wouldn't be here because you'd be at Louis C.K. show. TJ Miller is has a very active touring. His calendar is filled for the rest of the year. No one gives a fuck. Well, the problem is people, it's, it's, we're listening, yeah, I mean, every, you can't even have now the conversation about, you can't have the, who did what, there is no sort of, like, nuance, but I also understand where that comes from, because people are so upset, because this is something that's been sort of ingrained in society for so long, I mean, Meryl Mark, do you know Meryl Marco? I think she's a genius. She's but she a just, deaf lady? No, she's a, she was like the original. She, she like, she like, wrote, she the like. deaf the, lady I'm thinking of? She was like the Madeline original. Uh, Marley Maitland. Yeah. Maitland. She was All the right. original Sorry. like Letterman. Had, she like, she like came oh, up. Yeah. She did, she like invented the top 10. Like, she's, she's brilliant. And she wrote a book recently that just came out as an audio book. I'm going to plug it, which is, uh, it's just the story of women from the beginning of women till mm-hmm. now. And uh, like Eve? Uh, I, I think it's like the beginning of like people who had homes. Maybe I don't know, but uh, but it's it's she, you know she's been telling me a lot of stuff. Where I just go, yeah, people are rightfully mad. Like that being said, we we are in such a horrific place right now that picking your battles has never been more important. And I'm, correct, I don't, you know, 
I'm still upset there are like kids in cages and 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 in shelters in this state. That was a and couple weeks ago. No one's talking about. It. It's like it's like you guys <laughs> like this is that was so much worse than Sarah saying anything on Howard's. Like let's <laughs> but why you know? Oh, uh, seventeen distracting news stories away. Yeah, it, 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 it really kills me because I feel like I try to be a good person and maybe I just get so upset when uh-huh. someone comes at me and tells me that what I'm saying is not something a good person would say. Like, it's, it's. I don't care about anything else but being mischaracterized as a person, like, who's evil or unkind or anything like that. Like, that's what upsets me. Let me ask you a question. Why do you read replies to your tweets? That's my, pro- that, that's my problem, <laughs> and that is why I could never, ever, I think, ever be any more known than I am now, which is, like, ten people uh, consistently telling me to go away but like i don't i don't think i could handle i don't think i could handle any kind of even like the attention on roseanne the show and the attention on things around me i realized how anxious that stuff made me and i was like oh i will never try to get more attention in that Mm -hmm. way if that Mm -hmm. makes sense like it actually is a kind of a good lesson because i can't handle it like i'm under tables like i can't i i have i have a sincere question too okay so uh as far as your career and promoting yourself which is really what twitter is about to anybody that has to do you know you know that she your career is more writing than stand up. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's why, yeah. you know that. th- oh. that's why right, I'm right, going right. to ask. So, like, as ben- being beneficial, because I understand it's beneficial to certain people's careers, but as far as being beneficial to your career, is there a percentage you'd say before, be- besides just making yeah. you miserable and benefiting your career? Not really at all. Because yeah, you should bail I, no, no, on no, it. But, but it's not because <laughs> it's not because I don't think uh, whatever. It's not because people hate me. It's just that. I started on Twitter as like a, a, it was just a dump for stupid jokes that I was, I mean, I was writing monologue jokes at the time, so it was a lot of stuff that I wasn't getting on shows and just silly, 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 silly stuff, but I don't tour for a living, so it's not like having a bunch of Twitter followers is going to help me get more right. money for my script. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it just doesn't right. work Indeed, in, it could, that way. in the current climate, it could actually lose you the job because, oh, that's right. that girl that Who said has, this. Like, who's vocal about something. Yeah. Right. right. So it's, it's, it's okay. kind of like, why I, am I, I there, I, I, there I, to see what's you, happening? You guys keep talking. I'm going to... Okay. I'm, I'm, my follow-up question would Roseanne be at the same time. Answers. No. Once you get... What? I'm calling Roseanne to see if oh, she answers. sorry. Once you get uh, a certain amount of people who are following you on Twitter, as insignificant as that really may be in real life, I'm, do you feel like you kind of have an obligation to say something positive toward you know when there's things going on? Because you do have you know like you reach a lot of people. Is I mean, that one of the things that would hold you there? Maybe I'm trying to think about because if it's not beneficial to your career and it's only making you miserable, you should bail out on it. I should <laughs> soon. It, I'm getting there, but I also like, you know, I do my dumb little podcasts, and that's... Well, Hi, Roseanne, this funny. is Doug Stanhope. I love you. We're, I was trying to get you on a podcast on speakerphone for a minute, but we were just talking about how much we love you. Bye. <laughs> um, that'll go in, like, Variety is a, a Roseanne writer loves... Roseanne. <laughs> no. no, I said it, not you. <laughs> Sound no, it's, you know it's 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 also it's also fucked. I'm so like, it's been a weird. You should move year. to Bisbee. Oh wait, you have a place here. You just don't show up. You, you <laughs> wait. You wait on purpose I until I miss I had, you. First Wherever all, she walks, her I miss dog, you that's so her much home. that I go. If you come back, I won't make fun of you. <laughs> it's funny, you know that Pete. There are people who uh, there are people like, what do you do there? And he's died. Doug is like eh, he's drinking. And Kurt, he's the mayor Kurt, of Bisbee. I heard he he, he can do anything. It's it's funny what people think is here, and then I kind of explain like, I don't know if you like the vibe. Like you can be. Yeah. It's I don't I don't I you do stare one at dr- I do smoke pot. You know, I don't my one drug. Is, I smoke a little pot. Yeah. Yeah. I and people stare at people sports. really think I'm like oh you do mushrooms and you get ecstasy and I'm like no I kind of wrote. 20 pages and is I your asshole okay <laughs> i i like and i to, like talk to people at the coffee place we're all like 90 and i bought an old brooch and <laughs> it was lovely like what do you want me to say i got some noodles i don't go other places in bisbee but i describe this uh the fun house as uh 
Imagine if you like to go to a bar, but you don't want to go to a real bar. So you can go to a bar where whoever sucks, everybody will collectively know it and push them out immediately. <laughs> That's like a, a fantasy bar that doesn't exist is where we hang out in Bisbee. All right, we're, we got to wrap this up. So okay. don't rape women and don't pretend that you got raped if you didn't. And uh, don't try to jump on bandwagons and just... It doesn't matter because we're comics and we're going to keep talking about the shit we talk about. Fuck you. Oh, and Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Fuck you. And be a nice person. Yeah, yeah be a good person. C- can we go back to the if plot? If I can do it, you can. Can we can. go back to the plot of Fart Nazi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to, no, we're going to take her in a shower and shower her. Oh, I got a new shower. Okay. So Us too. It's a new hashtag he's working yeah. on. <laughs> I love you, Morgan. Welcome home. I feel your love, and I um, I'm gonna return it soon. That sounds <laughs> sexual, uh, and I'm gonna take it as that. Everyone bite. heard it. That's... You heard it, people. You heard it here first. She came on to me. Okay, let's get in the shower. Everyone, get in the shower. We'll see you next week. Vote. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Thank you. That was really fun.